Hello, in this episode we're going to be going into detail on for loops. Um, I'm assuming you have the knowledge from my previous episodes where I covered data types and that kind of thing. Um, so firstly, let's write a quick program that's going to check whether a number is equal to 10. So we're defining our number here and I've got sets 10. Um, and then we're going to do some user input stuff to make this a bit more interesting. So to create an if statement, you write if, and then you write your parentheses. Inside here, we have the condition. So the condition can be x is equal to 10, like so. And this is the equals that's used for comparison in Java. And then we use braces. And inside here is all the code that will be ran if x is equal to 10. So we're going to write x is equal to 10. That's going to be our message if it is equal to 10. Otherwise, we're going to do this else statement, and else statements are called if the if statement is not called. So we're going to have x is not equal to 10. And we need that in quotes because this because print line's taken a string. And let's try running this. And there we go, x is equal to 10. And that's what we'd expect because x is 10, we've defined it as such. So this returns is true. Okay, so now let's um, let's add the user input. So to do that, you're going to trust me a bit because um, you don't, won't really understand how this code works till much later on. As Java is a difficult language to teach, a lot of concepts kind of have to be used. Uh, harder concepts kind of have to be used early on to create interesting applications. So you're going to trust me on this. Um, but this is a scanner object, um, and you'll learn what objects are later. And what what it what it does is it's as you can see we've got error here, and that's because we need to give the scanner something. I'm going to give it system dot in inside these parentheses. And this basically you can read this in English as we've created a scanner which um, scans system dot in for new input, and system dot in is anything we write in this console down here. And what we're going to do is we're going to set the integer x equal to the next integer that the scanner receives. And now we're going to run our program and give it a go. So what this should do is it means we can set x equal to whatever we want, and then it will run the conditions based on that. So if we write, if we write 11 here and then enter, the scanner receives 11 here, so that means x is 11. And then, if, and then it runs if x is 10. But x is 11, so it's not this, so it goes in our else block, and then we get x is not equal to 10, which is the output we got. Now, let's say we wanted to check whether x is greater than 10. So, to do that, we use this um, this crocodile uh, bracket symbol, but you probably would have seen this as greater than in maths. Um, and other, if, if x is not greater than, than 10, then it runs this code. Now we have some code. Oops, that was messed up. There we go. Um, now we have some code which is ran if x is greater than 10. And we have some other code that's ran for x is less than or equal to 10. So if I write 11, 11 is greater than 10. And if you run it again and I put minus 5, then x is less than or equal to 10. That's quite useful. You can also you can do less than like that. So that would be if x is less than 10. You can do less than or equal like that, greater than or equal like that, not equal like that, and with that all the operations. But we will leave it as x greater than 10. Now let's say we want to do a comparison for names. So if it's a certain name, then we want to do something, otherwise we do something else. So we can use our scanner objects again. And we'll, we'll make a name variable, string name equals, so it's creating a variable called name that is a data type string. And if you don't know what that means, then watch my previous video. And we'll do scanner.next. And this takes in the next string. And you can see what it returns by hovering over it, and that's what it returns. It returns a string. And you've got a little description here. And it returns the next complete token from this scanner. And we'll say if name so we'll do if their name is equal to zemmel um, and you can write your own name if you're following along 
um, to do um, equals comparisons on strings, um, you do not use this. You do not use that. Um, e uh, double equals on objects, which a string is. And objects typically start with a capital letter. That's kind of the, the little clue. Um, when you use two equals, it compares references. So this would be true because these were both stored in the same location of memory. But this would not be true as this string was created separately, even if name's contents is XAML. To compare contents in Java, you use dot equals, like so. Um, each object can define equals itself, but typically it will be the contents of the object. So do if name dot equals XAML, and that's how we check that the name is XAML. Uh, then we will want some code like um, hi XAML. And we will get, get rid of this code for now by putting in a comment. Yes, this means this code will not be run. I can't remember whether I've talked about comments before, but this is how you do a multi line comment. You do slash start to a slash star to start the comment, star slash to end it, and anything between uh, the beginning and end of the comment will not be uh, compiled. It will not be ran as code. Um, so I can write whatever I want in here, and it will not affect the execution of my program. So now if we click play, then we type XAML. Well, we don't write XAML in quotes. <laughs> it goes high XAML because name was indeed equal to XAML. And we can do an else, which is right if the name is not XAML. And we can go ew. Um, and click play. And we'll say that Dave is an example name. And that goes ew. And it'll do that for any name that's not XAML. So now we've got if statements, we've got else statements. And now I'll cover else if statements. So, uh, that's been a bit weird. So, else if statement is if it's not the first if statement, or if it's not the previous else if, then it will run this condition. So, we put a condition here. We'll say if the name is equal to Dave, go hi Dave. Um, and this code is only ran if it was not already XAML. So, if we do this, if we click play, we now hit Dave. Then it goes, hi Dave. Um, it's important to note that an if statement, you can't put if one, for example, as that's not a Boolean. You can't put if true in quotes, as, as this expression does not evaluate to a Boolean. Whatever comes within these parentheses has to evaluate to a Boolean. And things you can check must be evaluated to a Boolean by holding left control and hovering over it. And we can see it says Boolean to the left of equals. That means this function returns a boolean, which means it'll work in an if statement. As so if true works, but of course, that would, if true, well, true is always true, so it will always run. And if false, this will never run. As the if statement is always making sure that the condition within its parentheses is true. And that's a quick rundown of if statements and uh, some basic way of doing user input in Java uh, using the terminal. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button if it was useful. Um, and if you want to stay a lot, stay for my other content, then you can hit subscribe. Bye!